Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can display suggestions as a user types into a text input field. So first I'll show you the solution which is just HTML. Then I'll show you how you can use JavaScript to populate the suggestions from a fetched list. And finally I'll show you how you can use validation to force a user to select one of the suggestions. So let's take a look at how suggestions can be implemented in HTML. So to create some suggestions, you need to create a new data list element and inside there, nest option elements and on each option, specify a value as an attribute. So I'll set the first value to Chrome and I'll also add some other options. So I'll add one Firefox, Edge, and finally opera so now that i've populated the data list with some options what i need to do is to add an id to data list so i'll set this to browsers and then on the input element i add an attribute list and i set that to the id of the data list that i want to use so in this case it's going to be browsers and believe it or not that's actually all there is to it. So if I start typing here, immediately some suggestions are displayed to me. And as I start typing, they narrow down based upon my input. Now, of course, with this implementation that we have at the moment, you can also enter values that are not on the suggestions list because they are at the moment just that only suggestions. Now, something to watch out for with this solution is that Sometimes you might be tempted to enter some additional information inside the options elements. So for example, you might enter the companies corresponding to the browsers in this case. And then when you see the suggestions, it looks like this is adding additional information and indeed it is in Edge. So it also looks like this in Chrome, but if we take a look at how it looks in Firefox, you see that that additional information is not being displayed. So the issue is that you can't guarantee that that additional information will be there. So that's just something to watch out for. Now, in this example, I hard coded the suggestions in HTML, but sometimes you might want to import the options from a list. So to populate the options here dynamically. So I'll show you how you can do that now using JavaScript. I'm going to populate the names of countries to this data list here. So it has now an ID of countries and the list attribute on the input is now pointing to that ID. So to populate the country suggestions, I'll be fetching data from a public GitHub repository. I'll post the link to this one in the description for this video. So the data is contained in countries.json here and if you then access the raw data so you click here view raw and then you have this json file available to you which you can fetch in javascript so copy the url and now i'm going to be adding some javascript to this page in which i'm going to be making a fetch request for that JSON file. So I enter the URL here. And so this request should return a response object on which there is a readable stream. So what I want to do is to read that readable stream from a JSON file to a JavaScript object. So using the JSON method on the response object will do that for you. And then the data itself is going to be available in the next then method. And so I'll handle that data inside this function. I have the data available to me as a parameter. So the first thing that I'm going to do inside of here is to select the data list by its ID. So what I want to do next is to populate the data list element with option elements 
corresponding to each country in the data object that I've just fetched. So the data structure is it's an array of objects. So I can iterate through the items in an array by using the for each method. And what I have available to me inside the function that you pass in here is each of the objects in the data array. And then inside here, this function is going to run as many times as there are objects corresponding to each country. So for each country, I want to create a new element. That's going to be an option element. So I want to do this each time this function runs. And then as you saw previously, you want to set the value attribute on the option element to the value of a suggestion. So if we take a look at the data structure here, the first object, the first country, the country name is available on the name property and inside there on a common property. So there's also an official property, but in this case, I'm going to use the common country name. So back in JavaScript for the current country that is being iterated through, I want to get the value that is available on object dot name dot common and then finally I want to append the element that I've created to data list so I do that using the append child method on data list because it's the element that I am appending now hopefully when I test this the countries are being suggested to me from that fetched list so you see all of the countries in that list are now available as suggestions. So that is how you can populate the suggestions dynamically. And you can still, if you want, enter a value that is not listed in the suggestions. So finally, what I'm going to show you is how you can limit the user to selecting one of the suggestions using JavaScript validations. So for that, I'm going to be moving into the third and final document that I have here. So the HTML is almost the same. The only difference is there's a prompt here that's asking the user to select one. And it also now has a submit button for the input. The suggestions are being fetched from that document, just like they were on the previous page. So in JavaScript, I've already selected the button input and data list, and I'm fetching that data and populating the options just like I was on the previous page, what I'm going to do to prevent the user being able to input a value that isn't amongst the suggested values is to do some work inside a validation function. So what I'm going to do here is to check the DOM for the existence of an option with the value that the user has input. So I can do that by using the query selector. So I'm going to create a template literal here, and I can use CSS syntax to try and find this particular element. So it's going to be an option and specifically inside an element with an ID of countries. And we're searching for an option with a type attribute that corresponds to the value of input dot value. So if this element that we're searching for does exist in the DOM, then it's going to return the element. If not, then it's going to return the value null. So what we can do next is to say that if the value of res is equal to null, so if the input that the user has given doesn't exist as an option, or if the length of res.input is equal to null. So if the user hasn't actually entered a value, then we'll throw an alert here saying input not value. Now with this function, we can do both live validation when the user has finished typing. We can also do it when the user clicks the submit button. So for the submit button, it's fairly straightforward. You can simply add an on-click 
attribute here that is going to call the validate function. So let's test this out now. I'll enter a value that definitely doesn't exist in the suggested list. When I click submit, I get an alert telling me that input is not valid. And inside that block of the if statement, you'd make sure that you don't submit the form. And so this way it won't be submitted until the value the user gives corresponds to one of the suggestions. Another option that you can also combine with this one is to do live validation. So this is going to alert the user immediately if they enter some kind of invalid value once they click off the input field or try to add their way to the next input. So for that, what we want to do is to add an event listener to the input. And you want to listen out for a blur event. So this occurs when the input field goes out of focus. In this case, the input field that we're entering the countries into. And when that occurs, just like before, you want to run the validate function. So I'll enter another value that is invalid. And if I click away or tab to submit, see that I now get this alert with input is not valid. So the user doesn't have to wait until the end of the form until they find out that the input is invalid. Okay, so that's all I've got for you in this tutorial. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.